Hey everybody, Hushman here. Welcome to another video. A short while ago, during one of my many filter builds, I had brought up the topic of cycling aquarium a natural way. And at the time I received a comment and a question. Pretty much what it involved was how I go about that process, uh, what it is, and could I make a video about it. So I think this is probably the perfect time for that. I am currently rather busy uh, getting a few things set up for clients, and... This aquarium here is probably about the only one I'm going to have in quite a long time that is actually suitable for that sort of topic. Uh, this is going to be uh, my new uh, beta breeding setup, and the media that's in here is all brand new. I'm in the process of the final stages of the large U-shaped paludarium. They're finally open now, and I can get a lot more stuff in there. And I needed uh, a couple of new bags of gravel for that. So I kept a little bit of it back because all the gravel I have is, uh, well, pulled out of old aquariums and it has a, a great deal of different types of media in it. Uh, there's, well, obviously gravel like this, but there's also uh, crushed coral and I don't want any form of contaminant in this. I want it to be as inert as possible. So the brand new gravel is perfect for that and that means uh, it is not seeded at all with anything. I mean, obviously a lot of that old gravel, uh, a lot of the bacteria, the beneficial stuff anyway, is probably died off, but it does set up faster than brand new gravel. So uh, this is, like I said, the perfect opportunity for this. So this is what I do when I uh, am faced with setting up a brand new setup. Now, some of these things I can do, uh, you may not have access to, uh, but hang on, I'm going to probably be able to tell you enough that even if you don't have a, another aquarium like I do, uh, that you can still do this. So what I do is, uh, first off, I rinse everything, and then I fill up with water, just like everybody else. I don't add dechlorinate or anything like that. It's really not necessary, and the same with anything that involves uh, adding uh, bacteria or anything like that into the tank. It's Again, it's just uh, an expense that you don't need. So as you can see, I set up the filter, and then what I do next is add a few plants. In this case, it's just java moss. It's extremely hardy, and you won't have any issues with it at all. And because I have the high humidity planter up there, I also put some up there, and a little bit of java fern. Now, these plants came out of my aquarium, so I know I can trust them, which is a good thing. Uh, if you don't have any plants of your own, you will have to uh, resort to setting up uh, from uh, either a friend's, hopefully, an aquarium society, other uh, really good source, or if none of those are available to you, uh, you can uh, go to a pet store and pick up some live plants. Highly recommend them. Uh, pick hardy ones, though. Uh, Java moss is perfect for that. Uh, Java fern is another really good one. And then uh, set those in the aquarium. Now, most pet stores and everybody else will have, as you can see if you uh, crawling around here, have some snails. Snails are excellent for this. And I also put in scuds and shrimp. Now, those are probably more expensive options for you, unless, of course, you know someone who has uh, a bunch uh, to spare. Uh, but that's pretty much what I do. All I do is I put in a few plants, uh, not too many, and uh, some invertebrates, so in this case, scuds, snails, and shrimp. And that is it. That's all I do. And then, of course, the, the hard part, the hard part most people find anyway, is the patient part, which means you have to let this run for a little while. So I add a small amount of food into here, and because it is only going to receive initially one male beta, uh, it's actually perfectly fine for that. So the snails and shrimp will, and scuds, of course, uh, we'll chew on the little bits of flake of food there. It'll go through the digestive tracts, and of course, it's all set up. Now, the other thing you can do, and I only recommend doing this if you really trust the source of the water you're going to be using. I take uh, some old age water from one of my aquariums, and sometimes what I'll do is I'll just stir up a bit of the tank as well to get some of the mulm, and I'll do a reasonably sized water change on this. Again, this is not something you're going to do uh, using pet shop water. I mean, that would be a really bad idea. Uh, but if you have, like I said, uh, someone you trust who's uh, been in the hobby for a long time, they have a really healthy aquarium, that is a, also a very good way of getting uh, some nice aged water into your tank, get some of the stuff going in there that needs, and of course, like a bit of the mulm. 
And that is all there is to this. There is nothing else that I can think of that uh, would make this um, any easier to do. No chemicals. Uh, like I said, there's no additives here. I don't put anything in uh, that costs any money at all. And I, whenever I set up, obviously, any of my aquariums in my fish room, uh, this is exactly the method I use because it is uh, really quite straightforward and uh, it takes no effort, really. And even for my clients, when I set up tanks for clients, I always do this exact same process, except, of course, I have to take the water from here and, and bring it there. But I don't have any issues with it because uh, all my tanks are well, disease-free. And, of course, the fish I raise for my clients are going to come from this water anyway. Uh, so there really is uh, no downside to this at all. And, again, the hard part about it all is it does require some patience because you are starting it really quite slowly. Uh, the nice thing about that is you're unlikely to have any issues with it. Uh, but it is going to take uh, four to six, maybe eight weeks for this to pretty much be ready and stable enough for fish. Now I'm going to push the envelope on that a little bit because I'm only adding uh, one male betta into this to start off with. And because, like I said, I can, I've done this enough times that I can watch their behavior. And if I see something a little unusual... I can do a substantial water change on this uh, from one of my other aquariums, uh, one of my other aquariums, I should say, that has a, a lower pH because i that's the reason why I'm taking them out of the pond. And I won't have to worry about it. I can stabilize it that way. Uh, but again, if you're inexperienced, uh, definitely do the patient route because uh, it will save you a lot of trouble. If you add too many things to this tank, uh, <coughs> sorry, to your aquarium too quickly, uh, you're going to stress the fish an awful lot, and if they're fish that you're getting from a questionable source to begin with, and you're not entirely sure how um, healthy they are, uh, you can just make them a lot more sick. Uh, because the fish that I'm going to be putting in here have been in my fish room already for months, uh, that's not a problem. I mean, I won't have to worry about it. They're already fat and happy, and they're uh, not going to be stressed significantly by doing this. So that's pretty much it. That is uh, the natural process. Throw in some plants. Uh, in this case, you also see some oak leaves because I want to lower uh, the pH a little bit. And I also want uh, to have a little bit of tannins in the water, again, because I'm going to be breeding bettas. And the only other change I'm going to be making to this aquarium is I will be adding a heater. My fish room is at about 76 degrees uh, or 23, 24 Celsius. And that's reasonably high enough anyway, but of course the breed bed is, it should be a little bit higher. Uh, don't need that for a uh, cycling process, but it is nice again to have uh, as I get closer to wanting to breed them. Uh, I may even add him into here uh, before I put the heater in, uh, simply because that way he will have an additional stress of a temperature change. And uh, like, all, like I say, all of my tanks are the same temperature, so... And that is basically all there is to it. So if you have questions or comments or experiences that you've had with this sort of thing, definitely leave comments below and let me know. And, and of course, as always, if there is another topic you're interested in, uh, leave a comment about that. So thanks again very much for watching what I do here, and I will see you in the next video, and bye for now.